come damn it hi everyone and welcome to hanging out with mad mimi we are here for you live every wednesday at 4 p.m. so thank you so much for joining us again uh, this week we're really excited we're joined by uh, dina testabray who Ha, she's a blogger and a business owner, and we're going to be talking about her journey through all of that, challenges, triumphs, advice, um, and so and how she works with her creative clients. So it's going to be a good discussion, and we'd love for you guys to join in as well. So um, if you hit the little grid button that's at the top of the screen, you should see a Q&A uh, there, and you can submit the questions and or your comments, or we want you to... Join in with the conversation. So, send us your send us your queries, and we'll uh, we'll address them directly. Um, but thank you, Dina, for being with us today. I'm really pleased that you're joining us. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Hi, and hi to everybody else out there. <laughs> hi, world. <laughs> um, I'm hoping you could just start by um, telling us a little bit uh, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well. Um, my name is Dina Tester Bray, and I live in Etna, New Hampshire, which is a really small village that's part of Hanover, New Hampshire, which people may know um, Dartmouth College. That's what we're known for in a regional medical center. And I live here with my family. I have my husband, my daughter is 13, and my 21-year-old son whenever he comes home <laughs> um, from college. And, yeah, I write a culinary blog called Gathering Flavors, which um, I call a culinary journal. And um, I also have a web design business where I work with people to set up um, websites and their online presence. Um, and that's what I do. And I'm also a Mad Mimi user. That's one of the reasons I'm here today because I, um, I really value um, reaching out to people in a very personal way. And that's why um, I write a newsletter, and I'd like to talk more about that later. But that's who I am. Yeah, so. absolutely. Thanks. And uh, <laughs> you have plenty of snow up there in New Hampshire, right? We have plenty of snow. It just nonstop. <laughs> when it's falling, it's a real pain. But it's so beautiful here now. It's just like um, a winter wonderland. Yeah. Nice, nice. And uh, right, so uh, Dina's culinary journal is at gathering-flavors.com, and it's. Just it's beautifully poetic, and I know you're uh you're you have a background in cooking actually, and that's one of the things that led to that blog, correctly? Correct? Correct. This is correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you a little bit about that? Yeah, I think just about how you how you started that project and um, where the idea came from to create your own blog that was um, you know about food and about um, you know whatever whatever else that you've put into it. Sure. Um, well, um, just for a little background, um, I, as I mentioned, I'm a wife and a mom, and uh, around, around 2007, um, both my, well, I took some time off from work, um, and both my kids were in school, and I decided, okay, it's time to start work again. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, before I was a mom, I, uh, I was a family therapist in Chicago, which is actually how I met my husband. And I also did a brief stint uh, in the culinary world. I went to cooking school in Chicago and worked in a number of different restaurants there. Um, so when fast forward to 2007 and what did I want to do next, I decided to start a cooking school out of my house. And um, gathering flavors grew out of that cooking school. Um, the school lasted in, a, in that form for about five years and I, I had really small hands-on classes in my home and I wrote a blog as part of that um, because mm -hmm. I wanted to attract new students, list classes, teach recipes, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and then the school got to the point where I had to decide if I was going to grow it and leave the home or do something different and I decided that I really liked writing about food and people seemed to connect with the stories I had to say about food mm -hmm. so that's how adding flavors was born. So did you, do you think that the growth that you saw in your, in your cooking school was directly related to the blog and the web presence that you had yes. for the cooking school? Yes. 
<laughs> and that was in an odd way by accident because um, when, about six months after I started the school, I cut my hand really badly. Okay. And it just was getting going, getting people really excited, and then I couldn't teach. Hmm. So I started a newsletter. And, um, and people liked reading it and asked, would you put it in a certain place? And, and um, that's how the blog came about. And you know, it was, it, yes, so it, they're directly, completely directly related. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the newsletter that you, that you created in lieu of the classes, was that, was that email? Yeah, it was just old-fashioned email. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> copy and paste. And I mean, this, you know, because that was around 2008, and I hadn't really, and I was just sending out, Messages to my friends, but but then it became, then I became the blog and, and people followed. Uh, yeah. What what was the what was the transition for you like to go from something that that you know from traditional email from something that is sort of copy and paste into creating a blog with a website and all of the other all of the other assets that you talked about? What was what was that that um, growth like? It was hard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think I think um, that was when blogging was sort of just getting going. And I remember somebody said, "Have you heard of something called WordPress?" And I hadn't, you know. And um, so it was a it was a lot of learning, um, a lot of just figuring out what this medium is. And I remember, I mean, the first site was really just black and white and ugly. <laughs> and I didn't know much about photography at the time. So I used stock photos. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so it was a big learning curve. Mm -hmm. And then developing the blog was also another big learning cur curve because, um, you know, at, at some point I, I decided I wanted to earn a living off of some of what I was doing with this writing. Yeah. And I tried all different things. I became um, an affiliate for, like, Amazon. I tried selling things off the website. Um, you name it, I did it. <laughs> and, and, but none of them felt like um, something I really wanted to own for the future. But what happened was, because I was trying these different things, I also had to learn about different platforms. Like Blogger can do one thing, WordPress can do another, Wix can do something entirely different. Yeah. My blog um, change its look and its style um, and people were saying, wow, that, that looks really nice. Could you do that for me? And that's how my web design business grew out of that. And that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Can I just show people a couple of um, yeah. my business? Okay, we're, we're going to try this because I'm referring to it. Um, and I'll just say before I do, um, no, I'll show you them. I just want you people to see what it looks like so that it doesn't seem so out of the ordinary here. Yeah, absolutely. I'd also um, be very interested in, in in sort of if you could tell us about what the different um, iterations or what the different changes were based on those platforms that you explored. Like what was it about Blogger that changed the look or WordPress, for mm -hmm. example. But um, I will I will do that in just a minute. I'll just show you a few of my most recent posts. Um, well, this is this is one that was really um, popular. Was these polenta balls? Um, they're really simple to make, and people just oops, I just changed it to something else. <laughs> but this is also nice too. And, uh, my my blueberry muffins here. But I, yeah, I just wanted you to see what it looked like. You know, mm -hmm. the structure of it has a a central post, and then alongside it, it has um, my recent posts. And, I, one of the things that I had to learn through all of this was photography. Mm -hmm. so, um, I'm really proud of the pictures there. But so I'll say you said what? What was the question again about? Oh, I, I'm just wondering if you can if you can um, sort of just explain the different. You said that that the the look and the feel and the the essence of your blog sort of changed as you were exploring these different platforms. And so right. I'm just curious about about that. Well, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, so, so first, uh, my first blog was a simple, basic WordPress 
blog. Everybody's seen those, and I don't have to show those because it looks <laughs> boring. Um, and next, next, I move to Blogger, and I'll show you. This is a blog that's on Blogger. Can you see that? Or no? Um, we you have to screen share again because you stopped it. But um, here it is. Uh, this now, can you see it? Yep. Okay. So this is a beautiful site. It's one one of my clients, Michelle George. Um, but you, in one of the reasons we chose Blogger is because it was really, really simple. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, Michelle doesn't want to spend a lot of time on things. She just wants to get information out to people. So you can see that um, it's it's beautiful and it's functional and it has your information, but it doesn't have a lot of spazzat. Spazzat is that the word? Is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> Anything, I think. <laughs> Um, she has chosen not to do this on her site, but with Blogger you can um, you can put advertisements on it, and you can um, do like PayPal buttons and things. Um, when I when I decided I didn't want to have any ads on my site, I switched to um, a WordPress site. Um, so Gathering Flavors you just saw is a WordPress site. Um, mm -hmm. Here's another WordPress site. Um, this is the uh, yarn shop whose site I just recently developed. And what, what's nice about WordPress sites is that they have a lot of different um, platforms and ways you can organize things. And, and the woman at this shop really wanted to showcase their store. So we have a, immediately a picture of their store and then we have um, a link to get inside the store. Mm -hmm. So, um, so um, that, that Whoops, gonna, that works really functionally very well. And what's great about WordPress, these are WordPress.com sites, is that they have a lot of choice, but the choices are limited. So if you're someone who gets overwhelmed with choice, um, it's, it's a great place to go. It doesn't, um, WordPress.com doesn't incorporate a lot of fancy features. So I've recently switched my own, whoops, I don't know what happened. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> oh, no, everything's good on your end. <laughs> I recently switched my web design site to Wix, and here, here it is. Um, and what's nice about this Wix is that you can you add a lot of anim animation, so you see how things are moving in and what have you. Mm -hmm. So yep. it kind of changes the feel, and that you can also um, it has Mad Mimi integration, which is really fun too. We do. <laughs> <laughs> So does that answer um, your question? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, how about how about from the functional side? I mean, you have a lot of experience in building sites with all of these different platforms. So, is there anything that you would recommend? Maybe like if somebody was looking for a platform or they weren't really sure where to start. Um, you know, is there a reason why you would recommend one over the other, or for different contexts, for example? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, you know, that's what I do all the time when, I, when I'm working with clients. So, <laughs> so I, I think a lot of it depends upon your ultimate goal with the site and your, your ease in using the site. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, for example, the, the, the Whipple Tree site that I just showed you, um, that, that came about, um, the, the woman who owned the store called me and said, could you help us develop a new website? And I said, sure. And when I got to their store, we're, we're, um, they, they told me about some of the frustrations that they had with the site that they were using. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to go to, to go big initially with selling online, and um, but then as we got to talking about what they really, really wanted to do with it and how comfortable they were, they realized that that would be um, take them to a whole other skill level that they didn't have, and they weren't ready. To to learn at that they may be later, but at that time they weren't. Mm -hmm. So we went with WordPress.com because they could showcase things. It's really easy to manage. WordPress has a lot of support, um, and it's and it's also pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's one reason I would suggest WordPress.com. Um, mm -hmm. I would recommend Blogger to people who um, uh, it is always free. All you have to do is pay for your custom URL. So if, if you're interested in keeping your cost down, it's great. 
And it's also very intuitive. It's very easy to manage. So, and then now I'm I'm just started with Wix and I love it. Uh, but I think you know Wix has its all its drop and drag stuff and its mm -hmm. graphics. But if if you've never built a website before, it could be really scary. So so I would only recommend that to someone who knows a little bit about what they're doing, or if you hire me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I do is I collaborate with people on building their websites. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now you had you had mentioned earlier that um, you know you you were exploring ways to sort of monetize um, gathering flavors and to make money make more money off of that. But that the affiliates and the advertising it didn't fit, you know, with your style or what you wanted to do, and didn't feel so authentic. So, how how did you end up? Um, what did you end up doing then? In in the end, um, or not? I guess in the end, I guess it's all probably still in process. <laughs> but where did you go with with um, with that when when the affiliates and advertising didn't seem to work for you? Um. Well, I, I just I just took it all off my site. <laughs> I mean, I think <laughs> I think the the interesting well, when actually the, I just became an affiliate for Mad Mimi. That's uh -huh. the only an affiliate for. And the reason um, I I want people to know that when I recommend something to them, it's because I really think it would be useful to them. It's something that that they that um, I'm not doing it just so I can get a click and a button. Um, so and you know the other side of it is that um, all those affiliate links, it's very um, specific, like how you. Um, it's very hard to get paid from those unless you get a lot of clicks, and people go go the distance. So like if somebody, if for I'm not going to say companies, but it's one site. You know they said if they. They have to click the link, and then they have to put it in their basket, and then they have to buy it, and if they return it, <laughs> so it, it just—it's <laughs> complicated. And it didn't to me, it didn't seem worth it. Mm -hmm. And I think gathering flavors is a very personal website to me, and I don't want people distracted by advertising. And that's one of the things people say they love about it. It's like kind of getting away from all that. Mm -hmm. um, so. So what, and that's when I went to selling more of my own products because because that felt more real mm -hmm. and, and that was fun. It just again it just didn't feel like me because I was like sitting in I was doing things alone and I really wanted to connect with people and that's why the web design is so perfect for me because um, you know I, I work with people and I get to know them and I get to know their crafts and um, it's very exciting. Um, can I show you some of the things that my clients? Um, yes, please do, please. <laughs> well, um, one of the one of my clients is named uh, Sharon Bouvea Como, and she's a, a um, seamstress, but she makes custom dolls. Um, and her website is Sonia Vermont, and this is one of her little girl dolls. And um, she's made this other one, so we have a multicultural <laughs> dolls, which is really really cool. And um, she's just um, a master at getting things right and customizing things for people. And we, we set up her website so that it would showcase her dolls and let people know when she was at craft fairs. And she also writes a little blog. So that's kind of exciting. Um, another one of my, my clients, her site is called Toko Terra Pottery. She's a potter. And she, um, she, Throws her own pottery and she hand paints without um, use of stencil. Every everything, wow. which is is really really something. And, and I, I want to show you. I use um, I use one of her um, this plate in one of my most recent blog posts that, that people really love. I just have to find it one second. <laughs> I can pull that one up. Um, but it's, okay. yeah. I highly recommend those cookies, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if anybody checks out, checks out the recipe, it's amazing. Oh, thanks. They are tasty. Can you can you see that now? Her her plate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, her her work is so beautiful, and it's it's so inspirational. Mm -hmm. Um, there's that, and then. 
The other is um, um, my husband is a writer, and we have two web. Well, he has more than two websites right now, but he's written one novel called The Hour of Parade, and another. His name is Alan Bray. Another one called The Puppets Tatter Close, and um, I mean, he's just brilliant, and he he's the one who taught me the power of the written word, and um, he's my he's my editor. So these, so I, you know, when we first started talking about this, you asked me um, about why I, I uh, marketed to um, creative people, mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it, it was interesting. It, it, I didn't set it out that way, but we we found each other. Um, because I, I admire them for their craft, and they admire me for my craft, and it just works well together. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, well, I was wondering if anybody else has questions. Um, please feel free to post them if you do. We're happy to answer. Yeah, please. Yeah. Join in. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, I'm I'm wondering if you can share us share with us also. Uh, what it was like to to go from creating your own website and creating your own blog and doing that for yourself to in transitioning into a more of a consulting role for folks. You know, people call you and say, "Oh, can you do that for me?" It's probably not the same type of activity as when you're doing it for yourself, as you know, yeah. when you're helping someone else do it. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, it's interesting because. Um, I think of myself more as a collaborator than as a consultant. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, um, well, my, most of my clients uh, are people who are brilliant craftspeople and who love their craft. And they did, the, the idea of setting up a website or social media accounts takes them away from what they love to do. Mm -hmm. so, um, but the flip side of it is that because their work is so personal, I couldn't imagine um, trying to tell their story without knowing them. I guess that's the way to put it. Because I think that's, that, that is one aspect of website design, is telling a story. Like what, that's one of the things I ask people in our initial meeting, which is what, when somebody clicks onto your website, what do you want that? What do you want that? Your website to say. So, like, um, I'll show you again. Like, Sharon um, is her uh, son in Vermont. And she wanted to say um, sophisticated but whimsical. And she wanted to make sure that people, her, her face was there so that people would recognize her from, um, from markets. Um, the Whipple Tree women really wanted to showcase their store. So, it, it, it's 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 just so personal that um, that's why I call collaborating rather than oops I'm gonna stop <laughs> than um, consulting and um, I think one of the things that, that I pride myself is in is that I can explain things to people because I don't have any um, technical background and so the tools that they're gonna use are tools that I learned on so I can translate that to them. Um, and, and the other thing is, is, um, is part of that collaboration is I, I want people to learn to enjoy the process so that they'll feel like, oh, I can do that. And that's, that's one of the most exciting parts of, of this process was like somebody will call and say, oh, you know, I want to put a post up and it didn't work. And I'll say, okay, just click this and click that. And they're like, it worked. And um, that's very satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, <laughs> it's a great. Um, it seems like it's a great, uh, you know, interaction of. I mean, it, you're not just doing things for other people. You're like, you're helping them create their own sort of identity, but on the web, which is which can be daunting, you know, to yeah. folks who don't have experience in that. But you come in and you know. You're you're there to help them do this in a way that fits them and tells their story, as you said. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I can add something to that, but we have a question. <laughs> Let's get it. Bill Adelstein, um, I was wondering if you have any experience using Rapid Weaver. No, I haven't heard of that before. Uh, do you have you heard of it? 
Rapid Weaver, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a, it's another sort of, um, you know, cr creation platform that you can use. Um, but uh, if Bill wants to share if he has any experience with it, <laughs> I'll post it and I'll read it out. Um, and while we're waiting for Bill, I'll say, I think another critical element to to this work is support, mm -hmm. uh, because the last thing people want is to be left high and dry with this website and not know how to um, to work with it. And I so part of my contract with people is that setting up the website is just the beginning. And I have monthly contact with all of my clients and I, I check their sites and I make sure they're working okay and on and on. Um, so that's really critical. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I also I'm wondering because that that's something that is n new in this in this web design services project. You know, it's not something that you would have had to do before when you were doing your you know your culinary journal. So, mm -hmm. are there are there other things that have um, that have either shifted how you deal how you work in your own blog or um, other things that have that have changed your perspective on this in in developing this project of of a collaboration services for people? Um, you know, I think that I, um, I guess yes and no. <laughs> I mean, I think I've, always, I've always tried to, um, you know, I was, a, I was a therapist, so that's, and a mom, so those are the two ultimate supportive roles. You know, I, my goal has always been to help people show and be their best selves. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it didn't doesn't feel like that much of a shift to me. I, I think if anything, the thing that I had to learn is um, how to pace people. Um, you know, sometimes people come in and we're like, oh, I'm going to write all you know ten blog posts a week, and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, and they don't they haven't even mastered email yet. So helping them figure out that how to get to that point. Um, I think does that answer that? And, oh, I, I'm not. Sometimes <laughs> my mind goes, and I'm not sure if I've answered the question. Is it? Oh no, yeah, that's that's absolutely great. Okay. Um, you know, I, um, I do want to say I want to because um, I want to make sure to end with what we began with. with, with it was mad me me, and um, so the whole reason I'm here is because um, I I wrote a post on my on my design site about the importance of newsletters, and um, I think that that is really critical. Whether you use Mad Mimi or some other service or just plain old Gmail, um, reaching out to people with, with a direct voice um, is is critical in get, getting them to know you. And um, if you want to read more about that, you I. My web design site is deanintestedray.net, and I just put this, this is my first blog post on it, so people can find it if you just click blog and deanintestedray.net. So, yeah. um, and we'll, we'll also provide the links um, to everything that we've mentioned, to all of, you know, the Sewn in Vermont and the, and the yarn, um, the yarn shop, and all of these things that, that we've mentioned or shown, we'll definitely um, provide the links so you guys can, can check them out um, without having to rewatch or remember or listen. <laughs> yeah, and here, here's the newsletter just so that you can see that's what, what it will look like. And also, all um, you know, all my clients, if you go to, again, dnatestabray.net, all my clients' links to their sites are right there. And let's see, Bill says, yes, I do. It's a creative platform. Sacks, a major tool for a rapid weaver, allows a lot of drag and drop creation, etc. So it could be neat for new people to take a look at. Thanks, Bill. I will take a look at it. That's that's exciting. I always like new new things. And, yeah, yeah, and um, it is also good, I think, because it's one of the things you mentioned about Wix. That's that's also a little bit unique, but also very nice. Is that drag and drop feature, and so uh, Rapid Weaver also allows you to do that as well, which can let you easily lay things out on a page if you don't necessarily and without you know having to code everything. So yeah, that's great. Well, good. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, what I, I guess, I guess I just like to, I like to finish up by asking you if you have any 
your parting wisdom or words of advice that you can share with folks who either, um, and maybe we take maybe we take one and then the other. It was like people who are in the position of your clients, so they're um, you know maybe a little bit overwhelmed by the web and aren't sure how to tell their own story. You know how how would they start? Or what what can you give advice to them? But then also I think folks who are in your position as well of either wanting to create a business out of their blog or create a business themselves and um, are maybe just getting started with that or any advice that you can give to them. So both groups. <laughs> well, um, for the first group, I would say um, it's good to, um, to to realize that that you know there's all sorts of scary stories out there about the web, but it's just a place, it's just a tool. It's like using a telephone or um, texting, you know, it's just a tool to get your message out. Mm -hmm. And I always encourage people to set up accounts with the different platforms like Blogger, WordPress, um, now Record Weaver, <laughs> and just get a, feel, a, a feel for that, a feel for that, and see what what might click, might not click. Um, I think if you're looking for someone to work with, you you want to make sure that that person gets you and you get them <laughs> and um, you ask them, you want to like say, you know, these are the sites that I like, can you help me create that? Because, um, you know, like any anything, um, you want to be able to trust the people that you work with. And you know, I would say to people, just, you know, just don't be scared and start out simple. Um, mm -hmm. I think for the people on the other end with a business, I would say, um, Stay positive um, and be creative. Um, be patient because you know certain things that you do in life, you don't know what they're going to lead to. Like so, for example, my first big career was a, something that I really loved as a family therapist. If you had asked me when I was in social work school, well, you think you're going to become a website designer someday? I would say no. <laughs> but um, but. That is really the work that I learned in working with people is invaluable um, to this business now, and, and so and also like recipe writing, um, mm -hmm. building a website. You it's sort of like building a recipe and following it through. So so just you know be creative with your talents. Don't don't worry about failing because failing leads to the next thing, and eventually it will come together. And um, Feel free to email me if you have any more questions. <laughs> that's what I would say. And that's great. Uh, everyone, everyone, email Dina with any questions you have. Um, it's no, I mean it's nice. It's also I think a testament to what you were saying before about support being so important. Is that you know, Mad Mimi? That's one of the main things that we focus on is that we're here to help you figure out how to do what you want to do. And so it's such a crucial part of of creating a client-based or even just a an interpersonal business is being there to understand but also to help out your the folks that you're that you're working with. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, and so, uh, so right, <laughs> Dina, oh sorry? I, I don't want to interrupt but I just say I model some of my um, support after you guys because I know if I send you guys a question I'm going to hear back within an hour on the weekend, maybe two, and that's what I try to do with my own clients. Just answer answer their questions right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so we're all we're all here for you. If you have questions for Dina, ask her. If you have questions for us, <laughs> send them over. Um, and you can find uh, Dina's Dina's uh, blog post about uh, email newsletters on her site. You can also find it on our blog. Um, and it's a great review of why you need a newsletter and how to go about it. So it's practical and a little philosophical as well. So it's really nice. I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, the, this recording will always be available on YouTube if you ever want to come back and check it out. Uh, and we will be putting all of the links that we mentioned in the description so you can find out, find the summary and um, all those great examples uh, in, in that description as well. And we'll be back again next Wednesday. So join us at 4 p.m. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. And thank you, Dina, for being with us. <laughs> thank you. It was, it was fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.